And right. so I have a lot of respect for like all of the talent that you put into it, like all the yeah. the detail. Well, I cleaned it up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, okay, <laughs> like, okay, yeah. All right, guys, so uh, today we're here um, with uh, the X-Travel guys. Uh, my name is Aaron with LSK Suspension. Uh, we're gonna answer a lot of questions that have been coming to us, and, and it's great to have you guys on here. really appreciate it. Um, we have Nestor and we have James here as well, and uh, we're gonna be just kind of going over all the, the things that we get in the comments and, and feedback and all that stuff. And, and one of the big things that we want to answer is our partnership with, with X-Travel. It's, it's, we're really excited about it. Um, we've, we've known Nestor for, for years and uh, we've worked mm -hmm. with them on our Cal West side um, in the past and we developed a friendship in a, in a, in a way that um, he trusted us to take this and, and take it to the next level. And, and it's, it's been really, really awesome to work with them. Mm -hmm. And um, so, so now moving forward, you know, LSK is offering this X Travel technology, and we're pretty pretty stoked about it. I mean, it's 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 really cool to finally have something that's uh, you know that's ahead of the curve and and uh, something new that people are excited about. And a lot of questions get asked because people aren't really familiar with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, th thank yeah. you guys. Yeah. yeah, it's awesome to be here. And uh, yeah, James and I we've been trying to figure out how to get. Uh, get you guys involved and get get the ball rolling how do we start this whole thing and it's just really cool because um our goal is for everyone to be able to see how amazing this technology is right mm -hmm. and then so with a partner like you to be able to bring it to to market and then just be able to have it out there for people to be able to to buy the kits and buy suspension systems that have it is, is amazing it's awesome yeah, yeah and, and bring our ability to manufacture and introduce that with your guys' stuff, I mean, we 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 try to manufacture as much as almost everything in house, and and bring something like this that's so complex and has so many items. It's, it was like a perfect fit. It was just like a like a fitting a glove, yeah, um, to make this happen. And um, so it's it's really cool. Yeah. What I love about it is it's the collab and, and seeing the designs go back and forth and and oh we can do this better and and yeah. this because this efficiency we have and then Nestor comes back and so it's 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 pretty cool to see you know the the collaboration as a partnership and yeah that's yeah. what we were really striving for 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 this so. and, and I will that's say really like cool. like seeing other people's work as we do I do a lot of CAD here as well as Van on on design work and we have Anthony as well that does a lot of the the product development at LSK and. And you've just been doing it for so long to see someone else's work when you guys gave us the files for it. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, there's a lot of like, like it's we don't normally get to see that. And right. so I have a lot of respect for like all of the talent that you put into it, like all the yeah. the detail. Well, I cleaned it up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, okay, like, okay. I didn't, yeah, it's yeah. not like like you know you know when someone comes to your house, right. you're like, okay, quick, clean up everything, make <laughs> yeah. sure you like clean up the towels right. and get you know like I didn't. Just hand you what I because normally it's there. It's it's a red lined mess. You know, okay. that's going on. It's so. like, did it get it done? Right. <laughs> right? Yeah. 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 No, yeah. it was cool to get it and go through it and see like how your mind worked on it as a CAD person working in SolidWorks. Like I have a lot of respect for that, and it was really cool to do that. And I got to go through it and give it my two cents and change how things got put together and key it, do my little twist on it for to make it an LSK item. And it's not that it was making it better; it just made it it's it yeah. was tailored as if how we approach it and. It was pretty cool to do that because I learned a lot of stuff from seeing your CAD work too. Mm -hmm. And I think any CAD person that sees um, someone else's work and is willing to share it and, and talk amongst it, like there's a lot, like all the phone calls between you and I mm -hmm. and talking about like, hey, how's this and this? And you're explaining, it's like, oh, I never thought of that. Like, that's pretty cool, yeah. you know? Um, so that was that was actually pretty exciting. Yeah. Well, no. that's the definition of innovation, right? Yeah. P keep pushing and, and making it you know the best mm -hmm. so. so so what's crazy is like when we first started talking about this you know we didn't really announce say hey we're going to be a partnership with x travel you know we kind of kept it under wraps like mm -hmm. we're working on this and making it happen and and uh, when we started posting pictures like hey we're making this it was crazy how many comments and dms and stuff like that we were getting phone calls about like hey like you know are you copying x travel like <laughs> like no one knew and it was kind of cool to see the reaction from the public and like how mm -hmm. many people were curious about it mm -hmm. and you guys did an awesome job getting it in the hands of racers this thing went through baja 1000 scored i mean, I mean everything right mm -hmm. you guys are just seeing them everywhere mm -hmm. and every race you go to you almost see at least a car or two that has it on it mm -hmm. but it, it's really cool to see a product tested and then us get our hands on it and be able to improve from that not just starting from scratch and mm -hmm. And I think that's there's a lot of value to that. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's huge for us. I mean, we want to make sure that when we're setting up a, a design, 
um, when you're going to use it that it's not just kind of like, eh, it should work. I, yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Like yeah. we want to be able to say, this works awesome. Here you go. Yep. And then then you can run with it and how you want. Like and like you said, put your own flavor to it. Like like I like tubing. I like plate work. I like you yeah. know, to do. I want to do everything billet. So whatever it is that you want to do to it, that's going to be on you to, 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 to make it how LSK yep. you know, it looks best for LSK. So. And so we have our X3 um, X Travel kit that did great in the pre-order. Um, we're planning on shipping uh, the first round of them out um, second week of March, which is super cool. We're really excited about that. We had a great reaction from it. But the amount of phone calls we're getting about Pro R kits is unreal. Yeah. And uh, we've definitely like speed line, like let's get this stuff going. Mm -hmm. We've got the Turbo S one. We've got um, RS1, we have the XP Turbo, XP1000, mm -hmm. uh, we have Pro R, and we have the, the, X, the X3 one, of course, which mm -hmm. is already going. So that whole UTV line, and then, you know, we can dabble in it a little bit right now, but to get into the truck world, mm -hmm. hopefully soon is yeah. kind of like the next, that you know, be. Raptor Bronco maybe, you know, mm -hmm. like hopefully that's coming. And uh, um, we'll get into that later, but mm -hmm. um, it's super cool to be at the forefront of coming out with the products that are going to be the future mm -hmm. and be at the front of the line of that. And, and we're pretty excited to be a part of that. And we're super stoked that you chose to um, partner with us. And, and uh, you know, I, I think everyone's pretty accepting of it. And it's going really well. Yeah. Yeah. I think so, it's, it's awesome. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Um, as far as, you know, um, I've known that you've been in the industry forever. I mean, a lot of people know your name if they've been around uh, the off-road industry. You've just been around in it, and the history and the and what you bring to this 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 industry is incredible. And uh, I mean, would you mind just telling us like how you got into this? Like, what wh where did it start? Oh, so yeah, I I guess I'm I'm the, <laughs> I'm the old timer, I, which is kind of crazy for me to think that, but I'm the old timer in the industry. So um, I started with Larry Plank. Um, out of high school, we started racing together and I, he wanted to start building stuff on his own and not buy people's stuff. So, um, when I went in there, I started fabbing and I was pretty good at it and started building stuff with him. And, um, we, we did a great job winning a lot of races and, and we were, we were on it. Like, I mean, everybody knew, like if we had something coming out or a new race car, we were going to be, uh, you know top 10 at least yeah so one, one of the backstories i love with that is um innovation right and uh, there was all these rules and nestor was always telling me how you know they had to get around these rules and oh, stuff yeah. like that so i think this innovation and and thinking outside the box really started yeah. with 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 those yeah. projects that right. Nestor had to come up with I, you know yeah i had a good, ton of stories i so. had a good um uh basically resource when with larry because larry's dad was a um he had a machine shop um, that uh, Albert and Mitchell grinding that it was an aerospace machine shop. Uh -huh. So anything we thought of, we're like, this could be better 300 M let's go talk to your dad. And then he'd make it. And I'm like, Hey, this would be better this way. Let's talk to your dad. And so we did, I mean, stuff like on the pro truck class, which was one of the classes we raced of uh, the Ivan Stewart pro trucks, you, everything had to be exactly what it is like stock. Right. I mean, and I can say this now cause whatever but, yeah. but i mean we had all kinds of like aftermarket parts in the steering boxes to quicken the steering we had i mean it was it, the 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 s rod that's like it's this little 090 s rod that controls the steering it would constantly buckle on everybody so we made a solid one oh, wow. out of billet and then i welded uh the ends to make it look like it was a piece of tube welded okay that was just stuff like that yeah it was just funny but um yeah we was constantly like innovating and changing stuff to make it um, give us that little yeah, edge fixing that we fixing the industry problems like mm -hmm. stuff everyone was having. You yeah. were you're in the forefront of trying to to make a solution for it. Yeah, ahead of it. so yeah. that was that was a really cool time, and unfortunately, Larry passed away, and um, I got left with a lot of the projects that we were working on, and um, I just kept kept it going, and and that's when I started the new line products, and we kept building high end pre runners and and race trucks and stuff, and and um, I developed my own uh, bolt-on four-link kit, um, which was one of the first ones out there. And so then, that was like the the beginning of the whole four-link error. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I did that, and then um, I did a bolt-on uh, equal-length beam kit, uh, which one of the first ones out to do that. And that was a huge like that's still happening today. People are yeah. still doing that. Car, so, yeah. Car Tech was ordering like at the time when I, I mean, 
I couldn't make them fast enough. He just constantly ordered really? four link kits and, and I beam kits like wow. constantly from me. It was just crazy. So I had a good thing going with that and then building race cars and stuff. And then, um, I got into the whole, uh, well, I, I'm not, I'm not a, uh, a motorcycle guy. So you, he's a motorcycle guy and a quad guy. I'm not. And, um, I always see these, the pit bike craze was going on and I'm like, ah, oh, pit bikes, that's cool. And, um, I'm like, I, I, I don't ride pit bikes, but I wish I had something like that, like in a truck version, yeah. like, that would be kind of cool. And then I started talking to my buddies, like, would it be cool to build like a little mini trophy truck? Like, would that be, and there was like, I don't know, that's kind of weird. I, <laughs> I've never seen anything like that. So I started building one and then I did. And the first time we went out um, to Barstow and to test it, I had like <laughs> all these people following me through the desert. What yeah. is that? What is that? And uh, I'm like, I don't know what it is. It's a little trophy truck. And uh, we named it, and um, a lot of the big racers, the Herps and um, Serapis, and like, I mean, all the, the big time guys, like Papas and Beer, uh -huh. they all had their kids at the time, that, which the kids now that race now, oh, had, the had trophy it. trucks were little kids, and they, they all bought them for their kids. They all just said, those are the best, we can need to buy them. All the Herps teams bought every, I mean, all their kids' trophy cards. So, um, yeah, trophy card's a big name. I mean, I, it turned like, into this huge, huge deal. So for the next 10 years, I was building trophy cards nonstop, just trophy cards. So and when did that start? Like mid-2000s? Uh, yeah, two, I think 2004, I think is what it was. And then um, I started building trophy cards. And um, then it, it, I mean, I built 3,500 trophy cards. Wow. 3,500. Wow. So, and that's worldwide. Yeah, Australia. yeah, that's Australia, incredible. and Australia still has a racing, a trophy yeah. cart racing series Jeez. too, but um, yeah, so I just did that, and then um, it died off. Um, the 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 advent of the UTV kind of killed a lot of the trophy cart right. racing off, um, but I pivoted. So from there, it's like okay, well, you can't beat them, join them. I just started building UTV stuff. Yeah, and then that's when um, at the time James comes in and. He's doing quad stuff, quad racing, and so he had me build a front suspension for uh, one of his quads, and um, it came out good. I, I think it was pretty yeah. nice. And um, he's he was asking me, like, what else do you have? Like, can can we do something really cool, innovative, different for these quads? I want something like different than anybody else. And so um, I had told him about this suspension system that I was working, been working on for a few years now and uh we tried it on the quad and that was like the most eye-opening because i was like still it was very you know i was designing and everything and it was still kind of like in theory yeah it was yeah. all theory like, so this was, is this is ground zero for x travel yeah. ground zero yeah. Yep. yeah so i was like is this gonna work I, 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 hopefully it does yeah and, and, and then, what was the motivation behind it was it like the steering on a quad is terrible and you just needed to reduce that like is that you get a ton of feedback to the steering tons. wheel so you're, you're, you're you constantly up. you know fighting the handlebars and then you know you put stabilizers on well, uh -huh. you know the stabilizer gets turned up too much and you're now you're fighting that stabilizer to, to do all your steering um and so you know one thing led to the other with with you know i was asking that well what is it how does it work you know mm -hmm. is it gonna bind up the steering like all, all the questions we get yeah, right? yeah and then it just you know we went out and and rode it in barstow and the gnarliest terrain and i got off it and go oh my gosh this is wow this is next this is unbelievable it was like as much feedback and i was i felt like i was riding a two-wheeler and as far as you know the amount of effort i was putting in and i'm sure at that moment you realized holy cow you know like we're on to something. Yes. Like this yeah. is this is the next this is the next thing. It you know? is. And that's really the you know, the excitement when I got off and I was you know, we're we gotta do something right with this. We gotta get patents. We gotta, yeah. you mm -hmm. know, bring in, you know, some some sort of real legitimate, you know, company and, and move this thing forward. So it, what's cool about hearing about this, like all together, is that it it seems like it's a trend that you've always started being um, developing something new to fix a problem mm -hmm. all the way back from you know, beams and four links. Yeah. And then yeah. the trophy car thing was just incredible. It's something totally right. new. And then moving on to the UTV world, it's like, well, the UTVs work so awesome out of the box. What can you do better? And you literally did it. Yeah. You did what people were trying to find what makes it better, and you found it. Yeah, and that's, you know? that's what my whole MO has always been with, with anything is always like, 
I, I, I don't mind building a bunch of stuff or, you know, like suspension kits or, or roll cages, whatever. That's fine. But what really brings me joy is like, let's disrupt the market. Let's change yeah. things up. Let's, let's build a, a pre-runner that with air conditioning and everything that you can drive to a race, race it, and then drive home. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. <laughs> like, like that was the kind of stuff I wanted to do. And like, I just, just be different, you know, and, and that makes me like want to really every morning get up and go, okay, what am I going to do? It's yeah, so yeah. exciting. We're going to do the new, yeah. we're going to do a Bronco. We're going to do right. like, you know, like all this different stuff. It's like, I, I'm, I'm, he's a bat cave. Yeah. You know, yeah. We, the, the laboratory of Nestor is, is what we want. What's and, next? And, How I, do we, and I think you're you like know. inspiration behind all this is like that you're, you're genuinely an offer enthusiast too. Mm. And there's a difference obviously between people that design stuff that are just there for a job and there's people that design yeah. stuff because they actually passionately want to solve a problem. Yeah. And your inspiration on on doing that for this industry is incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it seems like like what's next? You know what I mean? Well, like, he's been <laughs> hashtag hashtag game changer since the nineties. <laughs> okay. You know? yeah. It's like you can't you can't do that much more than what Nestor's right, done. Right, right. So it's, it's it's pretty awesome. Is there any other motivation that that drove you toward this direction other than just trying to come out with something that's just, you know, like, like as far as, is one thing that happens as a, as a UTV person that I race my UTV as well, obviously have the X travel stuff on it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, one thing that I did before I, I, I did all this with you guys is I upgraded so many components that I look back and I'm like, I wish I never even spent the money upgrading those things as, you know, like on a, on a, on an X3, for example, um, the steering's terrible from the factory. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, it's almost, it's almost dangerous. Like you let mm -hmm. go of the wheel and the thing just wants to just roll over. I mean, yeah. it, it instantly turns. It's like, it just doesn't have, ha, has a mind of its own. And, uh, so I bought the steering rack upgrade, a billet steering rack, uh, from shock therapy. Um, I, I, I bought, you know, stronger ball joints and different axles. And I, I, I pretty much did everything I could upgrade the bushings, upgrade the arms. I did everything I could to make the thing, you know, as strong as it could be and hold up to a race mm. and then spent all that time and money into it. And I could have just put the X travel on, never touched the steering rack. Like everything would have lived. I would have had uniballs now. Yeah. Like it's, it's crazy. Like at first I was like, Oh, okay. There's a cost associated with that. But really it would have been cheaper for me just to do that to you guys in the beginning than it was to upgrade all this stuff that I did. Yeah. You right. know? Yeah. And uh, I think that's something that people, it'll take time for them to grasp onto is that this X travel actually, um, in the nutshell, for what you're getting, it, it essentially helps you save costs and gets you race ready for a, makes your 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 chassis a, um, a race car pretty easily, mm -hmm. you know, in the front end. Yeah, I think um, that's what happens when you start with the design. You yeah. Know, instead of putting band aid fixes on a design that's been out since the 30s, right? Which that's the A arm and you know the single pivot top and bottom. Now, okay, what are the problems for the U, you know not UTV but the A arm? And then solve for those characteristics, poor handling, issues yeah. with, you know, bringing up electric power steering. How, how does that affect, you know, as you get to big trucks, you know, that's going to be a, a major problem as well. So this design, you know, that Nestor's come up with and, and invention is, you know, start to finish. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. It's the value. Yeah, it, that, it, and for people that aren't familiar with it, it's. We have two upper links. We have two lower links, and essentially, what we're doing is we're do in, a, in a in a minimal nutshell, we're reducing the scrub radius tremendously, and we're making it so that we don't get the crazy feedback when we hit things. And mm -hmm. and uh, now we're not we're not doing that so much that it's like hydraulic steering where you're driving a forklift and you hit a bump and you don't feel it. Right? That's not the goal. We mm -hmm. you want to be able to feel when the car is not you know tracking the way you want to. You want to have mm -hmm. a little bit of feedback, but. It's not ripping out of your hand. You're not putting a lot of effort in. It's just the perfect amount of feedback. And because of how all this geometry works and you have so much control over what's happening, you can control how much feedback the person feels mm -hmm. in your design. And that's pretty incredible. Yeah. And that, that uh, like, if you could tell us a little bit why this just, in geometry ret retrospect, why this kills the A-arm, you know? Well, yeah, that's the, the big thing is, like, you were talking about the different links, the multi-links versus, um, you know, an A-arm. So the multi-links are allowing you to also to share the load for the, the, the actual pivots. So instead of having that one pivot, like James was saying, that it's just one pivot on the top, one on the bottom, it's taking all that load. Every time it hits something, that one pivot's taking the brunt of that. Now we've got two pivots in the place of that one that's, that's helping the load. So that's, that's one major thing that it's, that it's doing for you and helping the longevity of the car also. Um, and then the other thing is like, 
by moving by the, what those pivots are doing is just creating this this virtual pivot that's moving it way out on the tire and then when you do that you don't you don't use that tire as a lever. You don't you don't leverage right, the you're tire. You're pivoting in the center of the tire. Yeah. So you you don't, when you hit something, it's everything's based on that center point load, and so you take so much load away from the tie rod that the tie rod's kind of just steering the car. That's all it's doing. It's not taking any of the ex, extra force that it would take normally, um, like you're saying, like on a stock uh, rack or anything else, where people are like, okay, we're going to put a bigger rack, we're going to beef it up, we're going to put hydraulic racks. Everything's just trying to fix that inherent problem that that ARM has, mm-hmm. and you're just trying to solve it for an off-road application. Right. So it's yeah, we're, we're solving that. One of the big things is is you know, okay, what's steering feedback? Well, in off-road, the the road's not you know pavement, right? So you hit a rock, you hit a rut, and that's trying to force that lever of the tire in or out constantly. Mm-hmm. So. You, you as a driver, you know, you have a set course, you see obstacles, you try to, you know, miss them, but you're going to hit, you know, it's just yeah, the nature of the happen. beast. Yeah. That lever is going to want to go in or out, right? And so, you know, through that, um, you're able to, um, shoot. Um, so you're, you're talking about the, 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 uh, the understeer, oversteer yeah, part of it? Yeah, understeer, oversteer, and how that actually feels in, in your wheel yeah. with from the a-arm to the to the x travel yeah yeah that's that's a big thing too is just um because now the the environment isn't controlling what the tire is doing you, you know now you're controlling yeah. what the tire is doing so the environment can't make like if you hit a rut or, or a rock or whatever and you're in and you're in a turn that rock normally on any suspension will move the tire slightly right so it'll move you it'll upset the car a little bit so now you're trying to like counter steer or move but you know you know how to drive. James knows how to drive. There's a lot of people that they're not that good at driving off road. They just don't do it that and, often. And, and to build off of that, like so, King of the Hammers, uh, la- not last week and the weekend before for the mm-hmm. Desert Challenge, um, it was so rutted out from all of the trophy trucks running through it. Mm. And uh, it was it was just if I normally would be fighting my car, and, and it's an X3 mm-hmm. driving through the ruts in two wheel drive. I was able to comfortably click in the four-wheel drive and focus on the track and where I was going and not worry about getting torn out of the ruts. Mm-hmm. Like, it was that alone. You know, by the end of the race, we, we race a lot in District 38, and by the end of the race, your arms just feel like dead weights. And then on the last one, it was just like, hey, I popped out. I was like, oh, I, I feel like I was just chilling, yeah. chilling driving, like focusing on the on the race and not focusing on, you know, rolling the car because I let go of the wheel for a split second, you know? Mm-hmm. And... uh it, it's hard for people to experience this without actually getting to drive a car like this, which is yeah. going to take time for people to realize how cool this is. Yeah, that's going to that's one of James's uh, one just a small thing that he has to overcome right now with people calling him and asking him about like, well, like why why do you, why do you, why should I get this? Why should I get this over? Like th- I got a long travel kit. Like that's 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 what I want to run. Like I've got this long travel kit and it's got this much travel. Like why should I get this? And and him trying to get the point across without them driving it and then having that aha moment like oh my I, I couldn't I can't believe this is actually possible. I didn't right. know you can yeah. do this in a car. But like he has to kind of figure out how to educate everyone in a certain way to let them find out like so so for like a new user if someone came in you know right now and they said i know I, this is my first time seeing it you know what would you tell them like why would you do the x travel over the arm like what 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 do you expect to feel not what's happening at the suspension but like as a driver you're sitting in the car you don't even get to look at the suspension what should you expect to see happen immediately your first time driving it well that's going to be more of a james question yeah it, <laughs> it, it, it's the most pres- I would say precise driving. So in, in the off-road environment, like you're saying, you're going through the track and you have an intended path and you're steering the car and then all of a sudden, oh, I hit a rock, it upsets the front and then it you know carries into the back. Now you're correcting, right? And yeah. now, now if you're you know correcting the you know too much for that next corner, you're late and then you have to come back. So in the in when I drive X Travel, it's just so settled. The steering wheel is just so compliant. It keeps the car. You know, compliant. I noticed that same thing. And, it's just and, like smooth and, from and, like one transition to another. And it's right? like things that like you're in dust. You're you're flying like when I was following you. It's like oh, I just hit a big rut. Yeah. And you're like bracing. You know, I find myself like I'm holding on to 
you know, control the steering wheel and it just never does it. Yeah. You know, and there's things that you can actually, you know, hold with your fingertips and your, and, but at the same time, that feel of the road that you want to feel and, and, and that connection to the road and the feel is all there. It's just when you're, you know, when you're, it wants to get upset, it doesn't. Yeah. And so like, even when you're in like uh, a turn with, you know, uh, whoops and, and usually on, on a normal setup, you're, you're seesawing a little bit. It's just, it just freaking goes like this and goes like that. And it's just, you know, something I noticed, I drove the car a lot, which is the stock A arms. Mm-hmm. Um, or just even aftermarket arms, just normal A arms. And uh, one thing I really noticed almost immediately was, you know, the control of the front end not losing traction. Mm-hmm. And did you do something? And I, and I know you did. You did something that mm-hmm. this X travel allows you to do that A arms couldn't mm-hmm. to keep the wheel more planted to the ground. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, normally, like when you, you're steering, one tire is going to have the traction based on a turn, and the other one's not because no one focuses the, on the inside on, wheel on, right that's yeah. the lighter wheel yeah the unloaded tire they don't they don't focus on it. they just focus on that loaded tire well in off-road it's not that way you, you're you're slight when you're sideways that inside wheel is the wheel that's loaded so now you have that inside wheel that's kind of all wonky because of the standard arm you know geometry so it wants to literally de-bead the tire the tire is laid over and it wants to run into stuff and de-bead it like with a with X travel, the tire is constantly loading. The no matter what the attitude of the car, it's trying to load the tire straight down the path. It's not trying to to offset the tire or change things based on some weird camber curve. So that's a big, big, big difference on. So so essentially, just for everyone to understand, you're keeping the wheels perpendicular to the ground, as regardless much as of possible, the car yeah. rolling. You're trying to achieve the wheels perpendicular perpendicular to the ground and you're keeping a contact patch as large as possible. Yeah. Is that right? As much as possible. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And and so from all this, obviously something must have inspired you to do this design. I, I believe there's some road cars that you came across that... Yeah. So I I, uh, I went to I, I, I went to Tesla, the Tesla factory. We were doing this big tour with a friend of mine and and uh, we walked through this, uh, this tour and, and the engineer says, hey, I heard you really like suspension. I want to show you the new X uh, car. And I said, okay, cool. Let's check it out. And I looked at it, and he showed me the lower arms. And the lower arms are a virtual pivot. And I didn't know what a virtual pivot was at the time. And I'm like, What's, why, is it, why do they do that? And he says, well, see that big giant brake and that regenerative system? There's no room for a ball joint in there, so we had to run a virtual pivot. And I was like, wow, this is really weird. And I'm lo- trying to figure out, same thing as most people. Yeah. How does it turn if, it, if there's two points there? They're <laughs> like, it's binding up. It can't turn. So um, so I drove all the way home. <laughs> I'm driving from San Francisco. And I'm just thinking, how can this work in off-road? How do we make this work? And that just, like, I mean, I just didn't sleep. And I was just trying to figure things yeah. out. And then, and then yeah, I added, I added the upper links to that. And then, But then there's just all these issues, like, on-roads don't have – with all the suspension travel, um, it on a standard those standard uh, virtual pivot. You're taking something that's already complicated in a, a limited <laughs> amount of motion and making it yeah. an off-road vehicle. Yeah, right. so it took me <laughs> yeah. three years to, to develop to where it works correctly through all range of travel. Because awesome. it just if you do it standard like on a road car, it doesn't. It goes all long. Everything goes, you know, weird. Right. Like when you start bumping it out and drooping it, like. It doesn't work. Everything toggles. The tire wants to spin around on itself. So, yeah, it, it took a while to figure out. But that's that's basically my my, my initial premise was like, I'm like, this has to work. If, if if this can work on that, we have to figure out a way to make it work in off road. So that's awesome. Yeah, that's really cool. So so you had something that motivated you, and you, you ran with it, and yeah, made it something that works for this industry, and mm-hmm. it's it's the industry first. Yes, absolutely. For another sure. game changer, right? Yeah, totally, totally <laughs> yeah. a game changer. Another yeah. notch in the belt for so new- like yeah. so UTVs are one thing, and then you know there's the we we know you're working on the Bronco stuff, which mm-hmm. is gonna be really exciting, and then and then Raptor, which I know is difficult, but hopefully we eventually get somewhere. We're, yeah, I think we'll get there with the Raptor, and then we're working on some trucks, big truck stuff yeah. too, which is exciting. Um, you know, like big high-end pre-runners and trophy trucks yeah i mean can you imagine like going to any of these big races and seeing you know any of the big tube chassis trucks with x travel in the front they'd be yeah. like what the heck like well, it'd be incredible i have this well all-wheel drive and torque steer too yeah the yeah theory I have. that's the future so. yeah because all-wheel drive is becoming the way right yeah. so this is 
you know, all these other band-aids around that this would solve those band-aids, which is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I'm hoping to lessen the need for these giant RAM assists that are put they're putting in trophy trucks. Right. I mean, they have these huge RAMs because they have to fight off the, the insane amount of yeah. you know, tire load that's going into them. So can you imagine if you can run, go back to the old days where you can run just a tiny little Oh, it'd steering, be amazing. Like, like a RAM assist. Like, <laughs> On the trophy truck. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's my goal. Like, I would love to see it because... I mean, it's going to be lighter. It's less things to go wrong. Like, I, I, I can't wait. I that's really can't that's wait. incredible. And so, so one thing I want to point out is that when we started posting about this and we posted some cat images, started posting pictures of it, people were like, there's no way that's going to rotate. Like, that can't rotate. Oh, what happens when you get on the brakes? The, the, you know, the, the, the upright's going to twist. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about, I guess, first about, you know, why um, it's able to rotate? Um, you know, we have two essentially in simple terms, V shapes. Mm -hmm. And from my understanding, in the most simple terminologies we can, that just like a four link when you have a parallel bottom link and you have a V shaped upper link, mm -hmm. imagine what happens if you had two V links top and bottom, mm -hmm. it would keep that thing centered. So that's how we're, uh, the V is locking it in place. And mm -hmm. It's keeping that upright from twisting mm -hmm. forward when you get on the brakes. Yeah. And it's right, it does work. And, it, and it's funny because people, we'll get people a comment and say, there's no way that's gonna work, they won't twist. Like <laughs> as if we haven't done it yet. And then we post a video of it and it's like, it turns fine, it turns yeah. great. And then people think, oh, that adds a lot of scrub radius. No, it, it does the exact opposite. Right. It actually removes the scrub radius. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of things I think with uh, people, um, their understanding of suspension, um, this might kind of show that what's actually happening versus what they thought was happening. Mm -hmm. And we're hoping to be able to kind of show people that. And, yeah. and w once we uh, are able to show people what it's actually doing, I think this will become a really popular setup. Yeah, and it, it's definitely that that different innovation and, and all the, just, you know, you're taking it to that next level. I mean, we had I-beams, I-beams were great, you know, long travel, tons of travel, it's, it's good. And then, you know, you start thinking, well, that's dirty travel. They, they call yeah. it dirty, <laughs> dirty travel. So, <laughs> so you got this horrible camber change at the bottom, you know, and it's like the camber curves are kind of messed up. So let's figure out how to make that better. So then you have this long travel arms and that really helps that suspension out. But now you're still dealing with that whole steering input issue. Yeah. And so we, now we're even further along than that. So now this you know, virtual link system that we have is basically the, the way to go because it takes all the great things about an A-arm and then also adds uh, steering solutions to it. Uh-huh. I, I mean, it's incredible. And same thing even when we get into like the tube chassis stuff, like the strength. We haven't talked a lot about strength in this, um, a lot about geometry and the steering feedback, which is obviously a huge key item in this, big milestone for Upgrading suspension is is the feedback and, and making this thing so you can drive it and feel comfortable. But on top of that, you know, we look at these UTVs and you see these tiny little ball joints. Even mm -hmm. on a trophy truck, you have an inch and a half uniball, just mm -hmm. one pivot, sometimes in single shear or most of the time single shear on the yeah. upper. Now all of a sudden we talk about making these uh, uprights with X travel would be, you know, two giant uniballs, double shear. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because we're able to move those pivots out away from the tire and now we can get Mm -hmm. we can get more in there and, and not worry about, you know, popping the ball joint off or, or uh, losing a bolt that's holding a uniball to the top of a trophy truck spindle. So there's mm -hmm. some definite, definite items, benefits of what you did here that just focus directly on strength. Am I right? Yeah. One of the really cool things, too, I mean, this was something that happened with Casey Curry. We had a, a part failure. Uh, it was the first time he's, we, we, we ever went out with the, the X-Travel suspension. And um, it was uh, the shock broke on the top of the link, yeah. and then um, which caused a bunch of other stuff to go let go. You know, once the shock goes, everything else follows. Right? Yeah, right. But the crazy thing is, like, if it was an A arm and all that stuff broke and all this stuff was going on, like uh, one of the links ended up breaking because of that, right? So the link broke, but he literally drove the rest of the King and the Hammers with a broken link. Wow! And finished. Like you can't if you broke an upper arm, you're done. You're right. Not driving right. it. You're not driving it <laughs> yeah. back. You're it like, may not oh, be pretty, but you're, you're gonna parked. make it. Yeah, yeah, you're just parked there. Right. You're like, oh my arm's broken. Yeah. But this you're like you've got so many more links, you're like, oh well, that link let go because you know the shock broke. So but we're gonna keep going. Yeah. So like it's 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 kinda cool. Like you, you, it's it's an added level of safety that you have. Right. right you break fifty percent of it, you yeah. can still keep going. Yeah. Obviously we don't want anyone to break any of the stuff, no, but I mean, it definitely and shows you if you break too. a ball joint, you're you're done. If you don't have another ball joint, you're yeah, right. you're yeah. stuck out there. And I'm sure that happened 
plenty last weekend. Yeah, you, you know, through a rock yeah. pile. Yeah. yeah, you're gonna something's gonna let go. But but yeah, I mean that's in the racing side of it. It's really cool to see the fact that people can they're confident enough. Like, and he just d- didn't. He's like, I know, I know, I'm not gonna get her. I know it's a great suspension system. Yeah. I'm just gonna keep going. Right. So he's like, well, let's just keep going. So it's, what's a, what's also amazing about that is after that one issue. I think we have fifteen to twenty thousand race miles without a mm-hmm. single failure. Wow! Yeah, and no fi- no failures within the steering systems as well. Awesome. So I mean, that's as we're as we're going through and and the best of racing in the harshest conditions, you know, we're, it's proven and it's race ready and it's ready for you know market and that's yeah mm-hmm. that's where LSK comes in and can mm-hmm. really push that and, with, and with even, your efficiencies. So. Even on my car, you know, I being on my car and being the first one that we built here. I wanted to break it. Right. Yeah, I tried. Right. Did you? I tried. Yeah. I did everything I could, and I have not broken it. Yeah. <laughs> and the uniballs are still all happy. Yeah. You know, keep it clean. Everything is nice and tight. I'm. Well, we've I, upgraded so much since the first initial launch of it. You know, like just from learning, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. we made we made so many changes to the to all the kits to make it stronger, and we're constantly like looking at stuff like how can we do better with the design mm-hmm. to make it better because we don't want. We don't want to rest on our laurels, you know. Like you, yeah. don't, we, we, if we see there's a, anything going on, like we we can make the design better, we're gonna do it. Yeah, you know. And the same I'm sure, same thing goes for you too. Like, you know, the suspension system you're building because it's 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 a high end system. It's not just the regular A arm kit. So anything you're gonna see with your system too, you're like, ah, oh, like I can I can change that a little bit, make it better. Yeah. So that's that's what's great about this partnership too. Is like I want to have this really cool think tank with us like we're constantly like bettering it and making Absolutely. it better and, like making the best possible kit yeah yeah no definitely and and what's cool is is that a lot of people think hey this is for racing it's not just for racing no. we want we want if you're someone in you know the other side of the country that's mud bogging and doing something it 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 works for every application and that's where we came in and we made this something that um, what we think is affordable and the, the correct price point for what you're getting um, and we wanted to make it so that you know, this isn't just for a race car. This is for um, people that want to upgrade their car and, 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 you know, drive it through any terrain. Um, this is this is meant for everyone. And that's that's where we came in. And yeah. and uh, we've made this. You guys have really focused on the racing application. And, mm-hmm. and uh, we want to make it available for everyone. We want everyone to have the ability to, to get this on their car and, and really kill it, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I really appreciate you guys. This, this is super helpful. Hopefully this answered a lot of questions for, you know, all the people out there that have been commenting on this. Um, thank you guys for coming today. Yeah. Um, it was it was super helpful. Um, make sure to uh, leave some comments below and uh, leave us any feedback. If there's anyone else that you'd like to see us uh, visit on here, make sure to let us know as well. And uh, we'll see you guys next time.